So now that we've created our quiz, we're going to go and add some questions to that quiz. So the first thing I'm going to do is just turn edit mode on at the top right, and we're going to scroll down. And for the quiz that we're developing, I'm just going to turn the hiding option on. That just means as we're adding questions or modifying the timing of quizzes, students won't accidentally see that quiz. So we'll jump into our quiz here. And there's a few different ways in which we can add questions. We're going to have a look at the two main ones here. One is to add it from a question bank and the other is to create that question from scratch. So we'll click add question here and you can see we have a maximum grade of 10 and a total marks of zero at the moment. We can have as many questions as we want. They don't need to equal 10. That grade of 10 would really be related to what we have written in our syllabus and how we're balancing out our marks. So I'm going to click add here and you can see we've got these three options. So, so I'm going to add a question from a question bank. So in here, we have a very long list of questions and they're not very organized in here at the moment. And they're a bit of a mishmash of different questions. So what I've gone ahead and done for the water polo questions is I've created a category for that. So I'm going to scroll all the way at the top here because we're in this quiz, it's going to show us the categories for this quiz. So you can see I've got three questions on the topic of Hungarian water polo. And I'm going to click on that and that's going to filter out all those other questions. So really important to create those categories. It's going to help you to manage your questions and we'll look at how we do that in a separate video. So you can see here, I've got three questions. We can add one, two, or three. We'll add all these questions to the quiz for the moment. We can preview the questions as well here. So you can see the different types of questions that we have or that you're adding. Okay, so we've got these drop down menus and a basic multiple choice question that we have here. So these are the three different kinds of questions we're going to look at creating. But for the moment, we'll just add those selected questions to the quiz. And you can see we've got those added. We can select different weights for each of those questions. So for instance, if we think that this question is worth a weight of two marks, then we can weight out our quiz that way. So for instance, the easy question of how many Olympic golds does the Hungarian team have may be worth only one mark. And then this question on touching the pool floor has a couple of options in there. So maybe we'll weight that as two marks and then we'll just enter the two and hit enter and that will apply those changes. We're going to shuffle our questions as well. And really that just means that no two students will get the same order of questions. So the way that this quiz is going to display is in pages. So each page is going to have one question on it. Now we can remove those page breaks. So I can click on the remove page breaks button or click on it again, and it's going to add or remove those page breaks depending on how you want your, your quiz to be set up. So you can see now I've got a total of five marks from those three questions, and it's going to, again, still be that maximum grade of 10. Let's go ahead and add a simple multiple choice question. So we'll click add. We're going to add a new question, and this time we're going to pick from our list of questions. So we're going to scroll down and choose multiple choice. And you can see we've got a whole range of different types of questions that we can add. So we'll click add here. And this question is going to be head coach in 2024, and we will copy this question, and then we'll paste in our question text, and we'll scroll down and begin to paste in our answers. So we have some general feedback for this question. You might want to point students towards a resource or some help if they get the question wrong. And then we have more specific feedback for each of the questions. So we're going to paste in the answers here. A few different options here. And then we have the last choice for which is the correct answer. And so for this multiple choice option, we're going to give it a mark of 100% for choosing the correct answer here. So with these multiple choice questions, we can actually set a different option for the mark that students might get. So there's a little bit of nuance in your answers, then students might get 50%, for instance, for say one answer, or 100% for the answer that is totally correct. And you can figure that into your quiz again to give students a more nuanced grade for the answers that they're choosing. So we selected our correct answer here. We can add in our feedback if we need to, but we're just going to save the changes here. And that's going to come back to our quiz. So again, you can see we have our quiz question here. We can preview it and we can test that it works. We'll stretch this out a little bit. So we'll pick an answer here and we'll submit and finish. And we can start again. We can fill in the correct response and start again and just kind of keep testing this question. What you're seeing is the information the students will get when they actually review the question live. So we'll close that preview and we'll go ahead and add another question. So we can choose any one of these add buttons. It's going to add it 
in that spot. So we'll add a new question here. And this time we'll add the gap fill option. And we'll call this game periods. And the question text is a little bit different. So we've got our basic question text here, but we need to add the answers in here so that the gaps can be filled. You can see we've got the question text and then we've also got these distractors here as well. So the correct answer is four and eight. So when we select these areas, we type in two square brackets and the answer in between. And then we have a number of distractors here. So basically the distractors are, in this case, will just be numbers separated by a comma, skipping out the numbers that we have as the correct answers. So we're skipping out four there and eight. And if we hit gap settings here, you can see we can see those gap settings. And you can see we've got when we click on those, we have some options for the feedback for the correct or incorrect gap settings. And we can go back to editing the question text. And if you do need some help with setting up these more complicated questions within Moodle, then just hover over the little question mark next to the question type at the top here. We hit that question mark, it's gonna show us how it works. And we can click on more help. And that will take us to the Moodle manual where we can see more detailed description about how these gap questions work. And actually you can see I've made a mistake there where I should just have one square bracket around those numbers. And you can see there's some more options that it's highlighting here. So under more options, we have the option for a drag and drop and a drop down or a gap fill. So we'll hit save changes there. And you can see it's popped this question where I click add, I'm gonna add another page between those. So if I click the preview button here, you can see that I can choose from the list that's given here. It's kind of shuffling the order. So we'll select the wrong answers here and then we'll submit and finish. And you can see it's complete. It's not telling us yet whether we've got the right answer or a wrong answer. We can preview it again. We can get it to fill in the correct responses to make sure that we've got those set up correctly. And then we can close our preview. So now we have a total of eight marks for these different questions and different weightings for each of those questions. Going to add one more question here and this time we're going to scroll down and we're going to add an essay question type in the title for that and then we'll paste in the question text and then we can scroll down and you can see we've got the options for the general feedback the response format we can set it as an html editor where students can add text they can add styles to their text we can set it as plain text if we want to keep it simple we can also increase the size of the box that students will be writing into and we can add a minimum and a maximum word limit so we'll say 500 and 750 be our word limit no attachments are allowed but we can allow them if we want to and then we can also write in some information for graders others grading so we'll hit save changes there and we'll preview this question so you can see here we're getting a question up at the top and then we've got our space to write in here now when students are writing these questions it's often advisable for them to write the question and then if they've got the ability to move freely between the questions to actually move away from the essay question and then back to it that will save what they've written so far and also because we have the Turnitin plagiarism plugin settings turned on. When students actually submit that essay question within the quiz, it will be run through Turnitin and the Turnitin similarity report. So now we have these nine questions. Let's just adjust these a little bit. We're gonna change these to one. And for our essay question, we will change that to four. So now we'd have the total marks matching the maximum grade. It's not necessary to do that, but you, you can do that if you want. And the other thing to note as well is that when we've created our quiz and added our questions, if we come back to the main page of our course, we'll scroll up and go to the grade section and we'll come into our gradebook setup. You can see in here, we put the quiz into the exams and quizzes category. It's currently hidden at the moment. And at the moment, our quizzes have some different weights in there. So our overall weight for our quizzes is 40. Have Tiana's quiz set at 35, our drag the words quiz set at 15, and we're actually gonna give this a weight of 10, and actually we'll give this a weight of 15. So the 15, 15, and 10 will add up to 40 so that we get a nice weighting between our quizzes. If we're giving quizzes where, for instance, they're weekly quizzes, then if you have a lot of them, you may want the weights equal. So if we type in one in our gradebook for all these quizzes, 
then that will equally weight them between there. So if you have quizzes from say week two to week eight, then however many quizzes you have within that period of time, as long as you put ones in here, it will equally weight those within overall weight or the quizzes and exams to 40%. So they'll all get the same weighting within this category. So let's scroll down, we'll save those changes and we'll hit continue. And then on the left here, you can see we're gonna come back to our quiz and we wanna actually come to our quizzes. So you can see the daisy chain here allows us to jump to that and we're gonna turn the visibility on. So now this quiz is available, students will see the time that it's gonna happen. And for quizzes and things like that, they will also show up on the student dashboard. So you can see I've added that quiz happening on Friday, 15th of March, and it's showing up because I have my timeline set to the next three months. So this event will show this is a useful way for students to see what's coming up within their courses. So hopefully this is useful. If you do have any questions about creating or adding questions to quizzes, then please do get in touch.